Hello and welcome to my kitchen. I am standing in front of my uh, domestic 240 volt 50 amp load bank, uh, otherwise known as your electric range. I have here the 50 amp uh, accessory input cable for the Apex 300 and I'm going to try to see what happens when I connect my range to it. I'm not expecting Apex to be able to provide on battery power the full output capability of this range, or that this range can you know, absorb, but uh, we're gonna test the pass-through. See, uh, see if this will pass through the full power of the range and what happens at different power levels when uh, we turn off the input. See what it'll do. Let me, uh, let me pull this out and see if I can get the cords hooked up and we'll see what we get. Okay, that was, uh, that was quite a challenge. Uh, the cords on these are about, it's, it's snug just to get it to here above the counter. They're meant to plug in either in the floor directly behind the range or in the wall just a couple inches off the floor. So getting it up here, uh, that's a struggle. But uh, the apex is plugged into the range outlet on the wall and the range is plugged into the apex. You can see right here, I'd move it around to show you, but there's absolutely no wiggle room to do that. Uh, apex immediately started charging and uh, I moved it down to silent so it would not get full. But if I kick it up to turbo, uh, let's see what we have it set for. It's charging at 3,850 watts. Uh, let me go into uh, the app here and see, see what we're set for. Charge mode is set for turbo. Let's go to advanced. Max grid input is set to 20 amps. Let's, uh, let's see what that does. Because what that will do is uh, if I'm drawing more than 20 amps from, via the range, Apex will kick in and help out. So I should be able to get up to 36 amps total, 20 from the wall and 16 from Apex. Uh, when I when I run the range and uh, at that point it'll probably trip out if I draw, try to draw more than that and we'll increase the uh, grid input current and see uh, see if we can keep going so uh, it's going to draw 20 amps from the grid and let's turn on some loads I'm going to um, kill the charge rate here tone the fan down. So now we're down to uh, silent charging 537 watts. So let me turn on uh, some burners on the range. Actually, let me uh, turn on the range, hit the AC output button. It is set to 240. My range is booting up. There we go. Okay, let me turn on uh, just a couple burners. Let me turn on the big burner here. Put it on high, see what that gives us for output. 2400 watts, 2300 watts. Uh, notice Apex is still charging, so it's taking uh, 2700 from the wall and putting out 23 to the, uh, to the range. So it is, it's still doing its silent charge. If I flip it to uh, turbo, let's see what it does. Now we're up to uh, 4,800 input. The app has not yet caught up with that. There it goes. 40, uh, 4,852 input and still, still powering my, uh, my burner there. Let me turn on another burner. We'll turn on this back one, which is the second largest. Put it on high. 4.7 kilowatts of output. At this point, uh, it looks like it is just passing through. It has stopped pulling extra to charge. Has the app caught up? Yeah, there we are. So let's look at uh, the detail display on the app here. 4782 total input, 2390 on one leg and 2393 on the second and we're passing that directly to the output. All right, let's add some more. What happens if I add these two burners?
Okay, so it looks like we have hit the uh, grid input limit here. Uh, 4,800 watts, 4,600 watts, and Apex is contributing some of its own battery power uh, to the load. That's interesting enough. Let me go and see if, uh, and by the way, the fans, this thing has four fans and they are, uh, they're making the noise right now. Let me go in and bump up the uh, grid input limit. I think this password is pretty common knowledge now, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so I've turned up the grid input limit to the full 50 amps, and we have resumed charging. So 10 kilowatts from the grid, and we're putting out 6.2 to the output. If I tap on the grid input there, 5,000 on one leg, 5,000 on the second leg, 10 kilowatts being provided to my range. And I'm aggressively boiling some water here. So we are also charging. We're charging at uh, 3.8 kilowatts and providing output of 6.2. So let me uh, turn that back down to silent. I'm gonna back down this burner here just so we don't fog everything up in the house. Yeah, it works. It draws from grid and it powers output to the load. Let me, uh, now that it's on silent, let me see what happens if I engage uh, the bake element in there. Actually, well, I still have one more. I have one more burner, but let me do the bake element first. Let me uh, just set it to convect bake at 325. What happens? Nine kilowatts. All right, so uh, let me then put it back to turbo and see how much Apex will take to charge itself. So it looks like we're, uh, we're pretty much right at the 50 amps. It is drawing 11.9, uh, 11.8 kilowatts uh, from grid, from the wall plug. Here, detail on the app, uh, 5,900 watts on phase one, 5,900 watts on phase two. Um, yeah, it's doing it. It's, uh, it's drawing at 50 amps, it's charging with all it's good for, and it is sending uh, the rest to my range. It is sending 6,000 watts to my range and taking three for itself for, uh, for pretty much 12. Well, nine to my range for a 12 total. So, uh, wow, I am duly impressed. Now, uh, if I go down and shut off uh, the breaker for this, shut off the, the AC input, this, this is no doubt gonna die. Do we wanna see that? I, I, I guess I could. It's, it's just gonna instantly trip off. Uh, but let's, let's, reduce the, uh, let's reduce the load quite a bit. Let's reduce the charge rate, just so these fans tame down a little bit. So now we're at uh, 1900 watts of output. And this is within what I've showed before. Let me turn on some more. Let's turn the convake, turn the, turn the bake element back on, see what that gives us. I want to get around 3000, 3500, maybe four. Okay, we're back to six. So. Let's kill some stuff. 57, 56, 51. Let's kill that. So all of the induction elements on the top are now off. We are just preheating the bake element inside. And I can see that's about a 5,000 watt element. So this is, we're in the range now where Apex will run for a brief period, I think about two minutes in overload before it shuts off. So uh, let me call down to my assistant 
and get them to shut off uh, the input. Okay. What? Oh, off? Okay. All right, and there we are. It tripped off. Um, yeah, what does it say? Overload? Inverter overload. Okay, so to clear that, we turn off the AC input, or output, and then we can turn it back on and reboot the range. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn this back on again and get a more moderate load. And this really isn't going to be anything different than I showed uh, when I had the Apex connected outside of the house in my initial video. It's we're going to kind of do the same loads, but uh, we can show it local. On? Okay. It's on? Okay. So uh, my assistant has the power back on here, and uh, we're charging again in silent mode. And I, you know, I had the, the range powered up off the inverter, so it just switched over and, and there we go. So I did have it set to convect preheat. Uh, and this model does have a second heating element for the convection fan itself. So I wonder if I just do regular bake instead of convection, if that will give us less load. Nope, it's still running 4,700 watts. Okay, so let's, uh, let's turn that off and just go back to some range top burners. So I know if the power goes out, uh, I am not going to be baking in my oven with a single apex. I will need at least two to do that. And if I want to make a whole dinner, you know, Thanksgiving with everything on battery power, I'm going to need three apex in parallel with the A1 hub to provide the full 10, 12 kilowatts that this thing can draw. Um, it's, this is the biggest load bank you have in your house, I'll tell you what. Um, so now I've got one element on, it's the big element, and we're at uh, 900 watts output. Let's turn that guy up. Let's turn on the second biggest element, turn him up. I wanna try to get within Within inverter range, 2600, 2500 watts. Okay, so there we are. We are uh, we're within what this thing can do continuously at 240 volts. Uh, I've got two burners on, one on high, one on medium. We can turn another one on, probably kind of lowish. This thing has a melt feature. You could melt chocolate with the induction. Induction, I highly recommend if you have the ability to find an induction stove cooktop, they are the thing. They are the cat's meow. They beat gas for power any day and they don't heat up your house. The, the energy goes straight into the pan. Okay, so we're at 2600 watts. Turn it up a little more. 27. 28, 29. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's kill the grid input again and watch this just seamlessly transition to battery and continue running everything. You can turn it off. Okay, you owe me lunch after this, dude. Off. Okay, and we're off downstairs and the AC input is, it uh, went to zero. Output is 2,800 watts. I'm still making steam there. App shows. I can do this for 48 more minutes. You can cook. You can cook when the power is out. How about that? Anyway, I thought this would be interesting to show um, what the Apex will do with the high amp cord. You could have this connected to uh, a, a big honking inverter generator, just the same. Uh, run your stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's a capable, capable device on its own. Uh, just imagine you had three of these, you wouldn't need to throttle any of this stuff. You could run it all at once. Uh, I have no idea why I'd want to make that much food if the power was out, but you could. 
if you had three Apex. Or you could do a smaller amount with just one. Wow. Okay. So that is the uh, 50 amp accessory input cord and uh, de demonstrating the 50 amp pass through of Apex with that cord. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.